Volca Beats. And uh, we're going to start off with something that's actually kind of recording related, uh, but it's also kind of performance related too. So I'll show you what it is. Um, remember how when I was showing you the sounds, I was like on something like the crash and I was like, let's play with the PCM speed. Let's turn that up. We're like, wow, that's a really cool sound. I wish I could record that into the song instead of just the just setting the speed and etc. Well, the truth is we can do that. And how we do that is we go over to function and select, we go over to the motion record section here, uh, press function and select speed. That means motion record speed. When we record in real time, the things we do with the speed and the part or instrument that we've chosen will be recorded. So here is an example. I've chosen the Agogo that I had mentioned before. Let's see what cool things we can do with the Agogo. So you can hear this. Um, we have done this crazy thing with this sound, which is supposed to be just a little bell sort of sound, a kind of very small cowbell. And now it's doing this crazy wild thing. And that can be done with any of the PCM samples. Let's try it with the crash symbol. So you can actually record the motion. You can record the movement that you've made with the PCM speed for any of the parts that are PCM and have that work into your um, pattern. So that's a really cool function. Another cool function, let's choose a different, let's go to this one. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna choose the first sequence. The next thing that's super cool is stutter. Now stutter is like, delay and it does some really cool things okay let's uh, first of all start off with time and depth right here in the stutter we're set to global stutter which means everything I do with the stutter which is a sort of delay will affect all of the parts or instruments equally I'm just gonna turn up the depth it has a very short time right now listen to what it the sound that it has when it has a very short time and we increase the depth creates a whole different sort of timbre. And that's really cool. And then as we increase the time, we'll start to hear more of a delay type sound. If you turn the depth up, which is like the feedback on a delay, you'll get this sort of patterned thing. So you can already see the possibilities with that. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of things you can do in performance to create little breaks. And you'll notice uh, that sometimes the delay is not in time with uh, the pattern that's playing. So you can actually fix that by holding function while you set time. And then it will always align the time with either a duple feel or a triple feel. And then you, once you find the setting that you want, you don't have to keep holding the function button. And then every time you turn up the depth, it will have that perfect uh, synchronized timing. But then 
if you change the time, it'll go back to whatever, unless you're holding the function button. And then you're like, well, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if, uh, if I could record some of those things I'm doing? And as it turns out, you can. All you have to do is turn on press function, turn on motion record stutter. Now listen. It'll record as much of it as it can within its own pattern. So you can hear what happened. And that's recorded and you can still do more stutter. And so you can see the possibilities are incredible with manipulating stutter, timing it perfectly by holding down the function button and recording stutter into uh, whatever you're doing. But there's another part of stutter that I want to talk about, and that is individual stutter. You don't have to have every instrument affected by the stutter. You can choose which instrument is affected by the stutter. And the way to do that is turn off global stutter by holding down function and clicking global stutter. Now, whatever instrument is chosen will have the stutter happen. So let's try snare. You can't hear it because the clap's happening. And of course, the thing I showed you with the function works with individual uh, parts too. Okay, so now I've set it to a perfectly timed, perfectly synchronized sound. So anytime I turn up the depth, you get uh, that delay pattern, which is really cool. And you can do that with any of the sounds that are, you know, you can choose anything and then the stutter will work on the selected instrument. There I've chosen the kick. So you can imagine all the incredibly cool things you can do with that. And of course you can record the individual stutter for the individual track as well uh, by using motion record stutter. It will work for tracks as well. Um, another thing that you may be interested in doing, let's choose a different, oh, this one. Um, we have the mute button which means you can, in the midst of performance, selectively choose which instrument sounds and which doesn't in real time. So you have the ability to mute various instruments in the midst of their playing and uh, potentially completely change the pattern that you have going by your choices of which instruments are happening and which are not.
The other thing you can do is active step, which allows you to decide which steps are involved with a particular performance that's happening. And that you do function and play. And in this instance, you choose steps that you want to play and steps that you want to remove. Now this is going to affect your timing, so um, it's going to create some pretty strange outcomes. Like, let's see. So basically, it's cutting out the steps I turn the light off on and leaving the steps in that I leave the light on. And you can tell that vastly changes um, <laughs> the pattern. And in the midst of this, You can also mute instruments. So you can see there's like a tremendous amount of variation that you can create in real time using these particular methods. Which I think is fantastic. The diversity you can get out of a simple 16 note pattern uh, even with those two things alone, uh, really, really incredible. And there is also jump step, which is function press step mode. You, whatever uh, step you press, it'll jump to that step. So you, you can introduce pattern breakups um, rhythmically by selecting the, the best place in the midst of your pattern to restart that pattern. And with a little bit of effort, you can get it to be in time with the beat uh, if you're using that beat to synchronize other volcas or whatever. I obviously am not making too much of an effort in that department, but you get the idea. And all I'm doing is I have the step mode activated and I'm just pressing any one of the steps that I want uh, to start over at the point at which I press that step. So yeah, with a little bit of effort, you can figure out some really interesting rhythmic variations that uh, you can create in that. In the midst of all the other things you could be doing, like changing the various timbres of the instruments or bringing out or bringing in various instruments or <laughs> using the stutter. Um, So you can see, uh, as far as live performance is concerned, you have a tremendous amount of really interesting, fun, cool things that you can do with the various sounds, with the various functionalities, various performance aspects, and various recording aspects. <laughs>